And thank you. <clears throat> this service began tonight with praises to the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Uh, the singing was about Jesus. Yeah. Tongue's interpretation was telling us to lift that name up. And I come to you tonight to preach to you about that name. And I firmly believe with all of my heart that Brother Mangan is right. The first thing in the mind of God is lost souls. Russia or no other man has the authority to start a nuclear war without his orders. And I was thinking, the disciples asked Jesus, what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And he said there will be wars and rumors of wars. But see that you're troubled not. There's going to be a lot of little wars, he said. But see that you're not trouble. Now, if we listen to the news media, we feel like we may wake up barbecued any day. But now, Jesus was telling us that that wasn't going to happen. He said, just don't let it trouble you. He's got a hole in this guy for us when he gets ready to get us out of here. Praise the Lord. But I want you to pray tonight. I want you to release your faith in this great audience tonight. And I could just spend a lot of time talking about all these great people here that organized this, planned this. Brother and Sister Mangan, Brother Tenney, Brother Kilgore, Brother Anthony. I say one word here about Brother uh, Mangan. Somebody might say, I don't, I don't know what they would, but well, he's just trying to build up something big. 38 years ago, he preached a revival of me in a little church. Oh, how he worked to build the Sunday school, and oh, how he worked to win lost souls. He prayed, he fasted. He's a soul winner. Praise the Lord. And it's never left him. And if he was preaching for you, he'd be doing the same thing. Praise the Lord. But tonight, one thing before we pray. Don't ever forget this. God will not believe for you. You have a free will, and there's a lot of power there. Adam turned his over to Satan, and we've been in trouble ever since. But the same man can turn around and use his will to say, I will follow him. You've got the will to believe. You have that authority. You have that right. The devil will tell you, wait, God will believe for you. Your lucky day will come. That's a lie. God won't believe for you, but he'll answer your prayer. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. Would you lift your hands and pray that we can release our faith tonight for signs and wonders and miracles. Let the Holy Ghost overshadow us tonight. Fill us, O oh Lord, with all of thy fullness. Baptize us anew with your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now, before I read tonight, I might say this. 
If a man were a prophet, he'd be in danger. I read in the Old Testament and the New, where if they prophesied as he commanded them, the people killed them. And if they didn't prophesy as he commanded them, he killed them. So either way you go, I think that's why some don't preach the fivefold ministry. They're afraid they'll get called. But it's in there anyway. It's in there. Let us turn to Acts. Well, uh, rather, I started to say the lost book of the Bible. A lot of folks wish it was lost. But we Pentecostals love it, don't we? Yeah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and the seventh verse, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, I believe this crowd's full of the Holy Ghost tonight. And where that is, things can happen. Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he's made whole, just be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, when God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Yes. This is the stone which was set at naught by you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name. Would you say it? For there is none other name. Under heaven, heaven. given among men, men. whereby Whereby. we must be saved. saved. Can you say praise the Lord? Lord. Turn over to Acts, the ninth chapter. Ninth chapter. Beginning at the 14th verse. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that called on thy name. But go thy way. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. Well, I'll show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. My text tonight will be called to bear his name. Now, there's no need for me to go into details. You know who that is. Called to bear his name. Not just sing about it, do that too. But we want to talk to you about the qualifications and what will happen when you're a chosen vessel to bear that name. Hallelujah. Say it with me, called to bear his name. His name. Do you, you believe your call? Lift your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Special touch. Special anointing. Who in all the world can bear it? But us. 
that totally believe Acts 2.38. We are the people of his name. There's such a power here. Brother Tenney mentioned the first night we have a date with destiny. We're not fatalists. We believe that God's door is wide open. And the greatest is yet to come. You can be seated. I could talk about the good old days, 59 years. But these are better than they were. Hallelujah. About the only thing good about them was the Holy Ghost, baptism in Jesus' name, and a holy life. Praise the Lord. We didn't have anything to get lifted up about, but we was glad we knew his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got something I want to tell you before I really open up here. Because if the Apostle Paul continually begged people to pray for him, us preachers need it. And he did. There's a lady that has been praying for me 20 years, two hours every morning from 3 until 5 o'clock. She was out to at it this morning. Let me tell you why. I came through the darkest hour of my life. And it didn't look like I'd ever preach again, much less pray for anybody sick. But during the time she was up praying, and she said, suddenly she was in a vision, and she saw a great crowd of people, lost, crippled, blind, insane, coming toward her. And she said, oh, what can they do? Who can help them? And she said, Jesus appeared, and he stood looking at her. And then I walked across to the, heel, the head of the line. And Jesus said, I've sent my servant, and I'll heal them if they believe when he prays. And she said, Lord, what can I do for my pastor? And Jesus said, pray for her. This was not a dream. This was not a fly-by-night flash. People don't stay on the knees 20 years, two hours from three until five. It had to come from God. So I come to you tonight. If you have a need not only with her 20 years of prayer Lord touch my pastor help him to heal the sick in your name and to lay hands on those that are lost that they might be saved this is ringing out every morning a few months ago she called me she said I've had another hour I know you're in trouble I know the devil's on your trail. I've had another hour. I said, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Let me tell you, saints of God, somebody, somebody needs to pray for your pastor. Somebody needs to hold him up day and night. I see somebody else praying. When a cripple gets out of a chair and walks, when somebody screams, I can see. Somebody screams, a tumor's gone. That's not just me. There's thousands of hours of prayer 
day in, day out. Amen. This is the greatest hour, Sister Mangle. If ever we needed prayer warriors, thank you for that message yesterday. Prayer warriors, you'll never get very far, and you'll never be able to bear this name that I'm talking about tonight unless you've got a real, genuine, Holy Ghost prayer life. Not a fly of a night prayer. One that you walk with God and you love to walk with God. Until Adam and Eve sinned, they looked forward to the coming of the Lord every day. Prayer is fellowship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul was called. To bear this name. But little did he know what it was going to cost him. Paul, you're going to have great revivals. You're going to turn cities upside down. You're going to preach to kings. But you're going to have some thorns. You're going to have some jailhouse experiences. You're going to be in some wrecks. You're going to be, go hungry. You're going to need some clothes. But you see, I've called you to bear my name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let everything go but bear the name. Fix this for me. Well, how we love to walk into the presence of God. And I love to talk to him, Lord. I'd love to be where you're at. There's no sin there. There's no honky-tonks there. There's no abortion clinics there. There's no homosexuals there. There's no blasphemers there. There's no pornography there. There's no X-rated movies there. Oh, it's a wonderful place, Lord. It's a wonderful place, Lord. But I hope you don't forget your little bride. I hope you look down here at us often. Uh, because we're wading through it. We're wading through hell. We're wading through sin. We're wading through all this stuff. And if we ever needed you, God, we need you. In 1984... We're trying to keep our robes spotless. We're trying to keep the wrinkles out of it. We need you, God. We need you, Lord, to walk with us. Hallelujah. 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 Satan, I hope you never get it. Hope you can get it through your thick head. That we're never going to quit. We got a name. We got a name to bear. And we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. We're not going to like, let lack of finances stop us. We gonna not, we're not going to let lack of fame stop us. It doesn't matter. We got to bear this name. We got to carry it to a lost world. It's going to hell if we don't wake up. Wake up! That's right. That's right. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what are you going to do with the four billion people that are lost going to hell? He said, what you going to do? What's the church going to do? It's your responsibility now. I died on the old rugged cross. I sent the same spirit that I used, the spirit of the Holy Ghost, back to you. I placed my name in you. You've got everything that I had on earth. Now go, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Did he say it? Whose responsibility is it? 
to bear the name. Everybody say it, ours. Praise God. Now, if a man carried me to a huge plant, electric plant, able to pour electricity into thousands of light bulbs, light up big cities far across the country, and I found that the line didn't leave the plant, and they was only burning a 40-watt light bulb. Power. Power. But it's not getting out in a little light bulb, 40 watts. I thought of the power here. I thought of the power that God has sent here day after day and night after night. How men has sparked faith in our hearts. But we must carry it. We must bear it. And it'll work when you bear it right. It worked for Paul. It worked in a dungeon. It worked on a ship. When in a raging storm, wherever he went, it worked. It worked because he was a chosen vessel. We are a chosen generation. You and I tonight have been called to bear this name. The other folks are not going to do it. They don't believe it. To them, it's just another name. But we have been called to bear this name. If a man was going to demonstrate a new automobile and he drove it out before the tens of thousands, this is extra, it's super, nothing like it in the world. And whenever he got in to crank it, it wouldn't crank. It wouldn't move. Nothing. No power. He'd be a laughing stock. I'm tired. I'm tired of lifting up this name and not much happening. God help us. There's not but one way to get it. And that's on our knees. Hallelujah. It's a shame and a disgrace to lift it up. Tell them it's going to happen, and it don't. Amen. This name has the same power, the same authority that it ever carried since the world began. In 1970, some of you older ones heard me tell this, but these young ones need to hear it. One afternoon in 1970, a vision came. I saw the sun about to set. Looked like it was about 30 minutes from setting. I saw a black cloud racing to blot it out before time. And I said, I don't understand. And then suddenly, through that black cloud, there shot a bolt of light. It came through and it struck the earth and lit it up. And I heard a voice saying, great power is coming. I turned it over and over in my mind. I thought about it for years. What did it really mean? The Holy Ghost is the great power. And then I began to understand great power is coming upon a holy people to believe and the gifts will operate. God has placed in the church nine spiritual gifts to rule his kingdom. Oh, what a marvelous 
thing here tonight and nearly every night tongues interpretation and prophecy mighty gifts flowing through God talking to us and all that inspires us but there's three power gifts gifts of healing the gift of miracles and the gift of faith these are the power gifts until they're in operation we'll not subdue nations we'll not turn them upside down why aren't they moving among us there's a lack of prayer and faith in the name that we've been called to carry and it's a disgrace to carry it if we don't carry it with faith it's a disgrace to carry it if we don't carry it with a heart of holiness put up or shut up carry it apostolic style or not at all lay your bible down and stop preaching if you're not going to carry it apostolic style amen peter did it james did it john did it the apostle paul did it he suffered but he did it hallelujah praise god there's nothing wrong with the name it's the same yesterday today and forever the early church they were conscious of that name they were jesus conscious wherever they went they knew they had a weapon and the devil knew they had a weapon the sons of Siva saw them casting out devils, laying hands on people. They were receiving the Holy Ghost. They decided to start them something. I know a lot of folks that have. They're like the Philistines that stole the ark. They said, if that's blessed them, my, what is going to do for us? But the thing that blessed Israel cursed them. There's a lot of folks grabbing a hold of the Holy Ghost without holiness. They better watch out. They're going to break out in balls. Amen. Something's going to happen to them because they don't love the name. They don't live holy. My friend, I live holy because I got a name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody say it. I've got a name. And that name is Jesus. And I love it. I believe it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, they seven fellows got them together and they said, In the name of Jesus, they got him a good one. They got him one. He was packed. He was packed. He had them. Brother, they was going to start big. They get them all out of that fellow, brother. The greenback would come in. They had it made. Amen. And so one of them leveled off at the old boy. And he said, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, come out. He did. They said, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? And the man jumped on him, beat him up, tore the clothes off, 
run them out of town. Why? They were not worthy to bear that name. Hallelujah. Worthy. That's right. If you're not baptized in it, I know some of those fellas. They got more devils than the fellas they fool with because they were not authorized to carry it. They backslid. They run off of three or four. Somebody's beside their wife. They never had it. They never had a love for it. They only saw an opportunity to get rich. You don't get rich bearing the name. Paul had to work. There was times he had to make tents. But he stayed with it. Thank God. The Lord said, I can't remove it, Paul. You have called to bear my name. But you're also going to suffer. You're going to suffer. That's the thing the American people don't want. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to crawl. I don't want to spend eight or ten hours at night praying. I don't want to watch the old clock strike twelve and say, Good morning, Jesus. We don't want to do that. And so it don't work for us. Amen. Let me tell you this. When heaven and hell meets, the fire flies. Tell this to you. And whether Brother Bryce was back there or not, he was there. I don't know who else was. Hour after hour, in Jesus' name, battling hell. Let him know that he was a fool if he thought I was going to quit. You have to convince the devil, discourage the devil. You can. I don't think he ever went near Job's ranch anymore. Somebody come down and said, you hear about Job? Shut up! <laughs> but wait a minute, Mr. Devil. He's got twice as much as he had before. Shut up! hundred years passed. Somebody said, old Job's still living. Shut up! God let him live a hundred, at least a hundred years long when he would have lived because he's an old man. Whenever the devil jumped on him. You can't outdo God. You just have to hang around until he gets ready to move. His brother, you and just be patient. Hold on. Amen. And on into the night. Anybody that prays in the Spirit and moves on to way over the midnight hours, crying out in the name of Jesus, shout in the name of Jesus, and all of a sudden, I said, I want to meet Lucifer. I'm sick and tired of him. He's wrecking homes, throwing evil everywhere. I want to rebuke him face to face. 
and heaven moved. And when heaven moved, hell moved. And fire flashed. The pillar of fire, the right side of the building, the left side of the building, and over the balcony. Because prayer can set things afire. Prayer can move the devil if it's in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pray until you don't want to quit. Pray until that name takes a hold of you. Pray on and on and on and on and on until you don't want to quit. Pray because you love to pray. Pray because you love to talk to Jesus. You know the marvelous thing about it, if you do, how people say, the Lord never talks to me. They probably hadn't been talking to him much. Right? When you talk to him, you know, I would get worried if I had to do all the knocking on the door. Here I am, Lord, again this morning. Year in, year out. I like for him to just break in, you know. He comes down, and just all of a sudden I feel the Spirit descend upon me. Amen. Not even praying. Driving an automobile. Eating down or anything. Anywhere. And all of a sudden the Spirit descends and the Lord talks to you and He tells you what He wants you to know and He tells you He loves you that everything's all right. Brother, that's what we need. Him to visit us and let's not do all the visiting. Now, this I promise to tell and about every sermon I preach, wherever I go to new people. I had a flash revelation. And, oh, it stayed with me for days. I saw the beautiful name of Jesus hanging. But it was bloody. And there was a kind of glory shooting out of it. Power. And I begin to take a new look at the name. You always thought, well, it's just a great name. It's a name of Jesus. We sing about it. The poets write. It just about fits any beautiful song anywhere so beautiful but I asked the question Lord what is in that name that makes it so powerful why why and all of a sudden he began to show me what's in the name first of all the living word of God did it it is the word of God Jesus said the words that I speak unto you their spirit and their life Everybody say it, the Word is in the name. Number two, the blood is in the name. Because there's salvation in no other name. I read it to you tonight. When you call upon the name of Jesus, something's going to happen. And then the, whole, the authority of God's in it and behind it. Then the Holy Ghost is in it. You're never near the Holy Ghost, sinner, than when you say Jesus. No wonder so many people get the Holy Ghost saying Jesus. The Holy Ghost is in the name. And then the beautiful thing about it, God's faith is in the name. You got it there. That's the name you were baptized in. The word's in it. The blood's in it. The authority is in it. 
The Holy Ghost is in it. The faith of God's in it. The faith that holds the universe up is in the name. And if there's anything he's going to protect and see that works, it's the name. Wouldn't bother him for a galaxy to get out of control. But he's never going to let this name down. It'll always work when you take it with faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now I've told you about the vision. Great power is coming through the gifts of the Spirit and through the fivefold ministry that's been felt here day after day. But let me show you something. There is no other power that can break through certain barriers but the name of Jesus Christ. You can't get to the eternal spirit any other way but through the name of Jesus Christ. You can try. They tried it in the Bible. Cain tried it. Different ones tried it. No one can penetrate the eternal spirit. There is no way to break into it but through the name of Jesus Christ. But the minute you enter, you are in touch with the spirit that upholds all things. There's a sickness bearer that man cannot penetrate. But Jesus Christ demonstrated day after day his power to break through this barrier, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, all the marvelous things that he did in the name. And he taught his disciples and they went about doing the same thing. He also showed them how to break through the natural barriers. He walked on the water right he did many marvelous miracles like turning the water into wine he could break through any bear any bear that's necessary we can break through it then he broke through the barrier of death the name of Jesus Christ over and over in the book of Acts tells us where it broke through the barrier of death People came back to life because somebody knew how to pray in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want to show you tonight. Today I asked Brother Gid Rose. I said, what's the Lord been talking to you about? Well, he said, the platform of Jesus. Well, all this is already written down uh, before I talked to him. But. He confirmed this Jesus in Luke, the fourth chapter, in the 18th verse. Here's his platform. And there's six planks in it. And you better never take one of them out. This is what we're to do, church. Listen to it first of all. We are to preach the gospel to the poor. And we're to preach it with power and with the anointing. Number two, to heal the sick and the brokenhearted. And they're all around us everywhere. How can we let them go? How can we be nonchalant while they are sick and broken and wounded souls around about us? He said to heal the sick. Number three, to preach deliverance. To the captives, people who are bound with demons, and there's no other name but Jesus that can loose people from demonic powers. And then the fourth plate, recovering of sight to the blind. Many are blind to this truth. This would mean spiritually and physically recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised, number five. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 
He said, preach it now. This revival should continue from this auditorium to every church, to around the world. This is God's meeting. Then when he gave us the six, I want you to notice what he did. He said, and he closed the book, and he gave it to the minister. And he gave it to us. And he commanded us to do it. That's the six planks. And if we do it, he's going to do his part. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, that name. Oh, that name. Hallelujah. This is your night. It's the will of God to give you something tonight to take with you. If you need healing, it's the name tonight. We must do some big things from here on. The Lord promised the former and the latter rain to be poured out at the same time in this end time revival. 3,000 received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. That means some of you will see 6,000 in one day. For years we've had mass healing service. I did more of it from the pulpit than in a healing line. Many hundreds of people healed, delivered from all kinds of things. But the Lord talked to me a while back. And he said, you see all those people getting healed? He said, the hour is approaching as faith rises. For great multitudes will receive the Holy Ghost. A one mass prayer. It'll hit the congregation. It'll fall everywhere. I feel sorry for these folks that has to have somebody on the platform, movie camera on, tape recorder, to know whether they get the Holy Ghost or not. I don't know how they knew 3,000 got the Holy Ghost, but by their own word, all of you fellas that got the Holy Ghost Speak with other tongues. Get on this side of the road. Amen. A great mass. We've got to have this or we'll never reach the world. Who has he planned to give this to? The Jesus name people. Mass. Outpouring to the Holy Ghost. This is our day. This is our Pray your way into it. Live clean. Live holy. Walk hand in hand with him. Great things are coming. There are new ministers rising up among us now. I'm an old man. I'm 70. I hope you don't think I sound like I'm boasting, but I can pass off the stage of action. I don't know when. I know I've lived my time out. But the Lord has showed me the end time. 
He has showed me the great revival. He has showed me the power of prayer. When 20 years ago, he stepped into my room to talk to me about prayer. Can you imagine? He looked straight at me and said, pray for the Jews. I knew from that moment I was destined to be a part of what happens in Israel. And when Brother Tenney called me to preach the World Conference Pentecostal in Jerusalem, I knew that it was God's plan unfolding. I never forget it. I went up to that 14th room when I got there. I was, had been standing looking out at the window at the beautiful city. Just, oh, I was drinking it in. I went back to lay down. But all of a sudden, a light flashed. An angel stepped into the room. Why wouldn't one come? The Lord came and talked to me in America, and now I'm in their land. I don't know who he was. I think it was Michael to meet me in Jerusalem because I can do some things. Michael is the angel of war for the Jews. There's some things I can do that he can't do. And there's some things he can do I can't do. You see, I'm a Jesus name, Holy Ghost filled saint that can join in prayer. Somebody said a few months ago, said, Old Jerusalem fixing to get blown off the map. I said, "Uh uh-uh. No, no. I said, I got a little something to say about that too. I don't want it blown off the map. And the Lord don't. We're going to walk around there some more during the millennium. And there's the eastern gate over there. Amen. They're never going to blow it down. That's right. Praise the Lord. Now we are spiritual Jews. Made that way through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we are always to pray for the Jews. Pray for them. Then closing. Last year, a terrible tragedy hit my home. Brother Tenney came and had a missionary conference. And it happened the day he came. And I was so very down. When I got to the church, I wasn't able to go in to the meeting. I lay on the couch. i tell you this just to let you know that Jesus cares. He may not get us out of the jail, but he'll pat us on the back and say, let That's right. Helps you. I was lying there, and they was having church. And I said, oh, God. I wish somebody would come in and just tell me that you told them to come tell me you love me. I said, I, I'd sort her down. In walked one of the missionaries. It was Brother, was it Keith? Brother Keith? Yeah. He said, Brother Barnes, he said, when, when I was in Bogalusa, Said the Lord told me, when you get to Minden, you tell Brother Barnes that I said that I love him. He knew ahead of time what was going to happen. He had the missionary all ready to come in. But that Sunday, I was really down. You know, I was glad of that that he loved me. I told my wife, I said, for the first time in 45 years, I don't want to go to church. 
Not because I don't love the Lord, but I just don't want to face the people. I said, maybe we'll just get in the car and ride. Let Brother Brazel go ahead with the service today. And while she, she was preparing, I went back to the study. And you know, that old prayer, please. My. And all of a sudden, as plain as I'm looking at you, there before me, about three feet from me, was the face, the most beat up face I'd ever looked at. The eyes were black. The lips were swollen. And I looked and there was a crown of thorns on his head. And he was looking straight at me. Straight at me. And then it faded away in a minute too. And I saw someone with a cross on the shoulder struggling up Golgotha's hill. And I and it faded away. And I said, You stayed with it for me. He went all the way. I went back in. I said, Wife, we're going to church. I told her what I saw. On a hill, far away, there stood an old rugged cross. Somebody said, what did they do with that cross, Reckon? I don't know. I think the angels scared its glory land. In that hall of fame. Going to walk by it. That is. The crown of thorns. Hanging there. The three old rusty nails. That robe hanging on one. And the cat and iron tails. But on the foot, I expect to see some keys that Jesus took from Satan. Victory. Oh, victory. Victory tonight. Victory for the church forever. She shall go forth. She shall bear his name. And the glory of the Lord shall fill the whole earth. And he shall perform his signs and his wonders. Great auditoriums will be packed out. The waters will be troubled with people being buried in his name. For we are the people of his name. Call the bed. Oh. 
upon the authority of God's word and in the name of Jesus. I take authority and dominion tonight over every disease that's in this building. Every crippled limb, every tumor, every water. I command everything to leave in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our day. The world is in his hand. Everybody say God, God. can, can. Use, use me. 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 Won't do you any good to believe you'll use somebody else until you make up your mind to say, I will believe that now he can use me. That's it. The devil said, you can never build anything like this. Well, it's only a dream. One time, down in a little wooden building. Go on, dream. Dream on. Joseph was a dreamer. Amen. They didn't think too much of it. But one day, one day, he had the grain. Amen. He had it. And he fed his brother. And he fed his daddy. The dreamer was a prophet. Sometimes it takes a while. God can heal you instantly. But in dealing with human wills, give him a little time. He's got to set the stage. That's right. He could deal with them, but he won't force them. Satan will, but God won't force your will. He won't even force it after you get the Holy Ghost. You can still will to not pray. You can still will to just be nonchalant. But if you will, and I'm glad Jesus said, not my will. But thy will, when our will submerges with his will forever, you'll see it happen. Everybody say it, I believe. I, believe. I know I believe that God is going to use me. How silly it is to pray to Jesus to give you faith in him. If you like me, go to Brother Tenney and say, Brother Tenney, I wish I could believe in you with all my heart. 
Would you do something other so I could believe in you? That's an insult. I don't have to say that. I just believe. I believe the Bible. I believe that Jesus is Lord. And since I believe it, why sit around and wait for a lucky day? Put it in action. Amen. One last prayer, Lord Jesus. We're going to lift up your name. We're going to believe. We're going to see results. Soul saved. Devils cast out. Sick healed. You will use me. Thank you, Lord. It's done. No!